Stocks mixed on Friday. The S&P 500 up, the Nasdaq 100 down, bonds are up for the day on Friday, gold is up also. You're listening to Charting Wealth's comprehensive review and forecast for Monday the 19th of November 2018. If you haven't purchased our book, you can get a copy of the seventh printing of Charting Your Way to Wealth to understand fully what we do here at the channel. And also, we appreciate everyone who is supporting us at Patreon, all sorts of great things, the uh, the intermediate support level. You get a 15-minute once-a-month call directly from me to help you in moving forward with your training on learning to read stock charts fully. And if you're at the entry level, you get a Q&A every month where we go over the stocks you're interested in looking at and learning how to chart, finding out first if they are chartable. And again, spend time with you there doing that, plus all sorts of things, quarterly chart training, all sorts of things. Go to the Patreon link. You'll see in the show notes, you can find out more about what we have to offer there. And we so appreciate your support and help because we come to you every day for free. If you appreciate what we do, then help us out and support us. Let's jump into these charts right away. What do we see going on? Well, the week ended up on the S&P 500 up, so it took what was a red down candle at one point, turned it into a doji. That, of course, means lots of indecision. It's a red doji, so lots of indecision tending down after a prior up week. We see the derivative oscillator losing downward momentum. That price percent oscillator still heading down. So all things being equal, the market tends to move in the direction of the largest chart, which is the weekly chart, which is down. Although what we're really seeing happen is a sideways slide. But again, that price percent oscillator, which is our main indicator, I'll put that at the end of the training today. I'll put a link to that. If you're listening via audio and you don't get the YouTube link, just go to chartingwealth.com and look up the training that is on the price percent oscillator. It's there and available also at the YouTube channel. But please, if you want to get everything every day the right way, go to chartingwealth.com, sign up, be on our email list. We will email you the daily reviews and the weekly market reviews. Plus, in your show notes are links to everything. Plus, you get there the PDFs of the Daily Market Worksheet, Weekly Market Worksheet, and Trade Worksheet, which you very, very much need. Okay, so we see down as far as the weekly chart goes on the prime indicator, that is the price percent oscillator. What do we see happening on the two-day chart? This is very interesting. Two-day chart peaked out back on Thursday the 8th. Then we saw on the Monday, uh, the Friday, Monday two-day candle, sideways slide a doji tending down. So what happened? Of course, it went down. It's gone down over the last four days. Derivative oscillator gaining somewhat upward momentum. Price percent oscillator just won't cross over yet going up because we're going into the fourth day. We finished the fourth day of down movement. So now let's look and see what we see on that very important for our chart. Well, it's up for the last day and a half. What does that mean? Well, derivative oscillator losing momentum, price percent oscillator heading up, but it's not crossed over going up yet. So we'll continue to keep our eye on that. Of course, our jumping in point, and we warned you about watching those candles as they start to move up. Hopefully, again, we'll see some stronger down movement at the beginning of the week. Again, stocks do seem to be weakened. We are looking at the trend, and of course, that big weekly trend still down. So expect the market to tend to move in that direction. It'll have some aberrations. It moves down. It digests those down moves, and then may very well move down again. But again, let the charts guide you. Let price movement guide you. Uh, So we'll continue to keep our eye on things there. So now we'll go to the Qs. Now, of course, the Qs have been much more decidedly down than the S&P 500. Four weeks of down movement ending, that strong down movement ending on the week ending the 2nd of November. Then we saw a doji, lots of indecision tending up the next week. And then, of course, over the prior week, a down candle. We have a red down candle. Price percent oscillator still heading down quite markedly. The uh, derivative oscillator has lost a little bit of downward momentum, but still strongly down. And again, all things being equal, market tends to move in the direction of the largest chart, which is down. 
We go from that to the two-day. What do we see? Two-day still decidedly down. Three strong down, well, three down candles, we will say, over the last six days. Derivative oscillator still positive. Price percent oscillator pretty much flat. And again, hasn't crossed over that red signal line. Doesn't look like the two-day chart on the S&P 500. In fact, it's more decidedly down on the Qs. And then we go and take a look at that four-hour chart. What do we see? Down movement in the morning, some up movement in the afternoon, even though it was a down day, 0.35%. Our Heiken Ashi candlesticks, remember, we don't use the typical candle, open high, low, close. Heiken Ashi means average pace. We'll put that training in also for the day at the end of today's training. You'll see a link there. You can also find that at chartingwealth.com, those listening to the podcast audio. But what we see is down movement in the morning, some up movement in the afternoon, pushing through the two, the weekly uh, trend line. So that's the way it finished up. Derivative oscillator losing downward momentum. Price percent oscillator heading up, but not crossing over, going up. So again, keep your eye on things. We want to, again, watch and see what happens if the week starts off decidedly down on the charts. And again, Things are tending down right now on both of our stock indexes. So now we will go from the stocks to bonds. And we'll start off, of course, as we always do on the biggest chart. You work your way from the biggest chart to the smallest chart because the biggest chart's the big wave. Then you can see how the, inter the intermediate wave's doing. And then the smallest wave, which is the four-hour chart. What do we see going on on bonds? Well, we still are down as far as the big chart goes. Weekly chart is down, although this week ended with an up week pushing through the weekly trend line. Derivative oscillator losing downward momentum, price percent oscillator heading up. We go to the two-day chart. Now, it is in a confirmed up move, particularly over the last six days. If the weekly is going down and the two-day is going up, what does that mean for us? It means we don't have a trade at this time. Both of our charts Bigger charts have to be moving in the same direction. So we have up movement on the two-day chart. Does this mean we've reached a bottom on TLT? Are bonds going to turn around and go up for the foreseeable future? Don't know that yet. We're going to see just how strong that uptrend continues. We saw the four-hour chart crossover going up back on Friday the 9th of November, and it's pretty much gone up since then. Derivative oscillator, however, now is losing upward momentum, but that price percent oscillator is still moving up. Price movement still moving up, has pushed through back a few days ago through the weekly trend line. So we'll continue to watch and see if there's enough power in the two-day and in the four-hour to pull over the weekly. And if so, then we can set up in the next week or so for an up move. But we don't have one now. Remember, the charts guide us. We don't force trades. We want trades that we can trust. And those are trades that follow the trends. Weekly setting the big trend. Okay, going from bonds, lastly, to gold. What do we see on gold on that weekly chart? Remember, we had a weekly vertical crossover for the week ending the 5th of October. Things went up quite nicely. We did quite well in gold for the three following weeks. Gold started sliding sideways and down since then on the weekly chart, but we still see that the derivative oscillator is positive, losing some upward momentum. That price percent oscillator is still heading up. Now, the week did end with a red down candle, a little bit of a wick on top, longer wick on the bottom, solid red, which, of course, Shows us down movement. Ended the day, however, up 0.74%. But for the week, a down week. Still, though, no crossover even close on that weekly trend line. We go to the two-day. What do we see? Well, the two-day crossed over back on Monday the 12th at the beginning of this past week. Big, strong two-day candle representing Friday, the prior week, and Monday. And then we saw the two-day candle representing Tuesday and Wednesday up. And then another up for Friday, the first day of this latest two-day candle. But what does that mean? Well, we've not recovered where the down movement started on just that one day. I'm sorry, that one candle representing two days ending Monday the 12th. So again, not a lot of strong up movement. So we still have 
The two-day trend is down. The weekly is up. Don't have a trade yet. We see that the derivative oscillator is still gaining downward momentum. Price percent oscillator heading up. If it crosses over during the next week, get ready to potentially pull the trigger for an up move in gold. And again, all things being equal, gold still in a confirmed up move. We can hope to see gold move up. So just be prepared if that happens. Four-hour chart, of course, has been going up since gold bottomed out around the 113.50 mark back on the 13th, Tuesday the 13th, then uh, on the morning of Wednesday the 14th, has been going up for the last two and a half days, pretty much. Derivative oscillator gaining upward momentum, price percent oscillator heading up. So we'll continue to watch gold. So keep your eye on gold for a potential up move if that two-day chart crosses over going up. Still sorting things out on TLT 20-year bonds. And watch the S&P 500 and the Qs for potential continued down movement over the next week or so. Folks, that's where we are. So appreciate you being with us. You have questions, problems, concerns, feel free to write us, cw at chartingwealth.com. Do sign up and be a subscriber to our daily market reviews, which includes our weekly market review and the show notes and all that comes with the emails where you can get all of the free stuff and training we have to offer. Plus, if you like freestockcharts.com, we have links there with the layout that we use preloaded for you. And you can also subscribe to TC2000 with a $25 discount. And you can also find links to purchase our book and to our Patreon page to support us and get all that free special training. Hey, friends, thank you so much for being with us. I so enjoy doing this every day, and I enjoy the comments from you, and your appreciation means the world to me. Keeps me going. God bless. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.